Hi there, welcome to my Killian's channel where we're always learning. In this episode, I'm going to take you through my template, my workflow. How have I designed my, both the software and the hardware around me to work for me and my workflow? And every composer is different. Every composer is going to have their own template and their own way of designing everything around them. So I'm going to take you through mine and maybe you can take something from it when you're designing yours. Let's check it. Okay, now I use a Mac computer for my main sequencer, or also known as a DAW or Digital Audio Workstation. And um, I use two different programs. My main program is Logic Pro. That's an Apple product. Um, it's a great product. I've been using it for a long time. But there are others out there. A lot of film composers use Cubase. And actually, I switched to Cubase and did like three movies in Cubase. And I switched back to Logic even though I think Cubase may be actually a better program, my workflow just worked better with Logic. And the other program I use is Ableton's Live. So why do I use Ableton's Live in addition to Logic? Well, Ableton's Live was built around loops. And even though Logic and all these other programs now deal with loops quite nicely, none of them are as efficient or as elegant as Live is when it comes to loops. So I use Live for all of my loop stuff. On some movies, I'm doing the majority of my work in live. On other movies, I'm doing the majority in logic. It just depends on the material. Now, how does it work? Well, I use Ableton Live in Rewire. Rewire is a system that most of these programs and, or doors um, are able to subscribe to. What it means is if you launch one sequencer and then open another, the other one will say, hey, I see another sequencer running. Um, do you want me to run in Rewire? And if you say yes, it means that it will then sync to that other sequencer. And so your master, in this case it's logic, um, is where I control the transport. Stop playing everything and live follows that completely accurately. If I start playing logic from bar 25, live will start playing from 25. If I choose a tempo of 70, live will be at the tempo of 70. In effect, it's running as an exact slave to the master. And the other thing is all the audio from, from the slave is gonna be inputted or rewired into the audio inputs of the master. So my live tracks are all coming up in my logic and that's where I can do all my final mixing because everything is coming up in logic. Sounds complicated, but I will explain as we go through it. But before we get into the software, let's look at the controllers I'm using, um, the inputs. So first thing is the keyboard. This is just a 88 keyboard controller. Then I have a, a series of faders and buttons which is actually very cool, made by a company called Palette. And you can assign whatever you want this to be. As you can see, I've got CC1, CC7, CC11. I've got my dialogue volume um, and a bunch of other things, um, including being able to turn the click on and off. I love this thing. Very cool. You can basically rearrange anything you want like that, and it will remember what module does what. It's very cool. A lot of people use iPads for this, for all their controllers. And those are awesome. You know, if, if you're using Lima or, or your program's own um, software to do that, you can put an iPad here and all your controllers can be there. Um, but I kind of like having buttons and things that I can hit and pull down and I don't know. Maybe I'm just old school. The other controller I have is this guy. That is the controller that controls all of my articulations for my string libraries. So. We'll get to that in a second. And the other thing we want to talk about is that computer over there. That is a PC. It runs a template on there, which is my orchestra template. And it's using a program called Vienna Ensemble Pro. That is basically where all my instruments for my fake orchestra are loaded. All of those sounds are available to me inside of Logic. And I will show you that in a second. That is not rewire, by the way, that is connected via ethernet. It's a different system. But before we look at Logic, um, there's one other thing I need to show you, and that is my program called Video Slave. Now, Video Slave is what is running the picture over there. Video Slave is just a video player. That's all. I load the video in there, and then it is synced up to Logic using just plain old MIDI. Quite simple. And the audio coming from that movie, so that I can listen to the dialogue and the temp music that's on there, is coming up in Logic. And that's what we have in our first two tracks here. Now, let's have a look at the template in Logic. The first track I have here is the dialogue. If I unmute that... Unknown peanut farmer from Plains, Georgia. 
I hear the dialogue. If I unmute the temp, I hear the music coming from the video, that is the temp. Next up is the print bus. Now, we're kind of working in reverse here, but the print bus is the ultimate um, bus that I have. It's where everything that is in this template finally ends up. And this is where I print my mixes. When I'm finished with a piece, I print the piece onto this track right here. Now let's continue. Um, going on, we're gonna look now at the masters and the stems. Now, I just showed you the print bus. That's where I print a stereo mix. When I'm working on a movie, I'll send a stereo mix out to everyone so that they can listen to it and say, yes, we like it, no, we don't, whatever. Um, but once the movie's done, you're gonna wanna print stems for the mix, which is where all the instruments are broken out. I've done a separate episode on stems, maybe go check that out, which will cover that subject in detail. But for the purpose of this episode, we have two sets of folders here. If I open up the masters, you will see 15 tracks in there. Woodwinds, brass, strings, vox, solo instruments, guitars, bass, keyboards, synths, pads, drones, drums, percussion, hits, and a reverb master. And if I close that and open up the stems, you will see exactly the same list. Now, why is that? Well, stems in this folder is where I'm gonna print all the stems. So I can record enable any of these stems and then record the stems separately as long as they've been pre bust which we'll get to in a second. So the masters are used for being able to adjust the volume of an entire batch of instruments. Like let's say the drums are too loud, I can turn them down. Let's say I want to compress the hell out of the drums and turn them up. I can put a compressor on that master bus um, or add a reverb or do whatever I want. The master bus is there for processing. The stem bus is there for printing. Now moving on, here is a track called the Music Master. This is just a single track, but it is important. It is where the entirety of all the outputs coming from the masters into the stems, and then that goes into my Music Master. The reason I do that is if I have a director in here and I'm playing back a scene and the dialogue is getting drowned out by the music, now I would have to go and turn down each of the masters or each of the instruments, um, not practical. In this case, I just take the music master and I turn that down. That will turn everything down that I have in my logic session. Everything, everything that is related to music. The only thing that's not gonna turn down is the dialogue or the temp music that I have in here or the click. Everything else is affected by that music master bus. It's like your main fader on a mixing board. Very important to have that there. Moving on, my, my piano track is just a piano that I have up just in case I need to play a chord and check a pitch or anything like that. I uh, don't really use it much, but it's there for reference. Next up is a folder of tracks called instrument tracks. Now I have 24. Um, most of the time that's enough. Hardly ever have I needed more. Um, and this is where I will call up all of my contact instruments, um, all of my soft synths, or indeed the EXS sampler, which is a big part of my workflow process. Um, here I have a massive library of stuff that over the course of 20 years I've just built up and it's all available to me in a very simple sampler. And of course, like I said, contact or any of the soft synths I use are all gonna happen here in this folder. And none of the stuff is bussed to a correct bus. So if I bring up an instrument here, let's say a bunch of hits, I will then go and assign this to the hits master over there. So when I play that hit, it is going into the master bus, which is then going into the stem bus, which is then going into the main music master bus. So that's complicated, but there's good reason for all of that. And if I bring up a diva synthesizer, that will go to a bus called synth master over there. And if I bring up a contact instrument, 
that will go into either we could call it a woodwind maybe or it would go into the solo instrument track and so this way whatever i sign it to it's going to go to that relevant master bus which is going to go into that relevant stem bus which is where i'll print the stems which is going into the main music master bus that is the workflow now moving on i'll close that folder the next folder down is audio tracks this is where all my audio work is going to appear if i'm bringing in audio files from other places or indeed recording stuff around here um, instruments voices musicians that come in my my piano whatever it may be is going to end up here in the audio folder where all my audio tracks are i have also 24 here usually don't need more than that again these are all un as you can see here unassigned and i sign them as i go along because i don't know what i'm going to record today i'm going to, i don't know what i'm going to record in this queue and this movie is going to be different to the last one I did and so on. Next up is live tracks. Now this is where my stuff from Ableton Live, which is that over there, is coming into Logic. And each, um, I think I have th uh, 32 different buses coming in from, um, from Live. So let's take a quick look at Live. I'll bring it over here. So if I bring something in from live and i put it over here the service let's go ahead and close the dialog now nifty thing is i can also I just bring it down here so this is here and a fader that operates my dialog no matter what program i have up in front of me so let me bring in a sample into live now at the moment live is being bust you can see it's selected rewire as its output and rewire has all of these buses available to me so if I choose the left right um, then let me go back and show you here that sound is now going to appear here As you can see, back in live, if I add, if I add this sound, you can see it's also selected rewire out and the output here is three and four, um, but I can choose any, um, but right now it's three and four. So you can see here, if I push play, that will appear on three and four and so on and so on it's very nifty because no matter what instruments you're using in live um, you can get them separately into logic and then from there just like with the others i can bus that for example is a drum i will bus that to the drums and this is a guitar let's bus that to the guitars now if i go and look at my masters or even the stems um, you will see that the green light there indicates the guitar is coming through the guitar master and the green light on the drums indicates it's coming through the drum master now the rest of my template is all the stuff coming from that guy over there the ve pro stuff it's all the orchestral template material and um there's a lot of tracks, so let's go have a quick look through all of this. I have them all folderized. The first up is a string sketch pad. This is where I sketch out all my string ideas, um, just rough ideas, you know, before I start uh, doing all the programming um, in earnest. Um, so if I bring up, I have a violin, a violin two, a viola section, a cello section, and a bass section. Um, very simple, it's just a simple pad, string, nothing to it. So next up is a folder called LASS Strings. Now, um, everyone's different. Some composers like to put all their violins into one folder, no matter what um, you know maker of sample library they come from, and then all their violas and blah, blah, blah. I like to put them all together based on the library, um, just because each library has a different sound or a different um, use, basically. LASS is, is um, 
um, a company called Audio Bro. I love this library. It's not a new library, but it's such a great library. Um, and um, I have, as you can see, violin one, violin two, violas, cellos, and basses, just like I did there. Now, let's go back to explain something. I have in this template around 230 tracks. That is not a lot of tracks. There are composers who have literally thousands and thousands of tracks in their templates. Now, why can I get away with only 230? Magic. It's called articulations. Now, um, every company deals with this differently. Uh, if you're a violin player, you can play softly, you can play loud, you can play with vibrato, you can play without vibrato, you can play near the bridge, you can pluck it, you can hit it with the back of the bow. Um, those are all called articulations. Now, in the old days, you used to have a different sound or a different um, track for each of those articulations. So in your violin one track, I would have, you know, 10, 15, 20, depends on the library, different tracks, each track having a different articulation. It gets unwieldy. Now you have articulation sets. And what that means is I have one violin patch loaded up. That's it. But I can access different articulations just in this one track. And how you do that is by articulation sets, or I think they call it lanes or something in, in um, uh, Cubase. But basically what it means is, there's my sound. And on this keyboard here, which is just a simple key, again, MIDI keyboard, nothing to it. Um, I have programmed the articulations that switch the sound. So if I want a staccato, or I want a pizzicato or I want a minor trill or I want a legato All of those articulations are available in that one patch from there, which is freaking awesome. Um, and what is really cool, that data is recorded into the actual note. Let me show you how that works. Let's, uh, let's skip to there, turn the click on, and we'll start off with legato. Then I'll switch to pizzicato. Then I'll switch to spiccato. Now, let's put that all in there and let's have a look. Right here, you can see the different, th the three different things I played. Now, if on the left here, it shows you what articulation that note has been assigned to. If I select those notes, it shows you that those are assigned to legato. And if I select these notes, it shows you they're assigned to pizzicato. And if I select those notes, it shows you that it's assigned to spiccato. I can, of course, change that to whatever I want, which is awesome because what it means is if you program a string line on one library and then copy that into another library, it's going to remember and it's going to play the right articulation if you have one thing and that is if you have a special program that enables all the different sound libraries to have the same articulation because they don't they all have different articulation switching spitfire does it one way audio bro does it another way this company does it another way and it can drive you crazy but there's one company that makes a program called art conductor um the company's called babylon waves and what this company does let's have a look here is it enables you to select how the how the key switches are coming in in this case it's this keyboard if you had an ipad you'd be dealing with a different thing here then it shows you what articulations this particular patch has available to it so some libraries will have fewer articulations available than others um, and then it will show you the output so basically this program is going to translate 
whatever you tell it into whatever that library needs to hear to be able to select the correct articulation, which changed my life. I mean, it's freaking awesome. So I can bring up any library from any company. They have every single library known to man and his dog available right here, um, which is amazing. So I can load a new library from a new vendor that I've never heard of before that does a completely different kind of switching. And with this program, um, I just have to select here, my art conductor set, and um, it will work flawlessly. Did I mention that changed my life? It's pretty awesome. Now that's the same for violins, violas, it's all the same. Um, the sword patches don't have any articulations. That's just a straight up um, muted um, set of patches. And then the solo patches again, all have the same articulations. So it really becomes very simple when you can move through all of your stuff and have access to all of those articulations, all of them within one track. So moving on, um, next one is my Spitfire chamber strings. Um, here I just have violins, violas, cellos, and basses. Again, same idea. I can, in fact, let me demonstrate. I take what I just recorded there and pop it on here, and without me having to do anything, check it out. Which is, I mean, insane. Like, it saves so much time just being able to copy from one library to another and not have to change anything in terms of articulation. Of course, you still have to do some fiddling. They all have different ways they react to controller pressure or, um, or to velocity or to any number of things. Moving on, I have uh, cinematic studio strings. Um, in this case, I have the same set of five um, levels, but then I also have their solo strings right here. And same company again, Cinematic Strings was their first library, uh, uh, which was a more lush, bigger sound library, um, which I have here. And why do I have so many string libraries, you may ask? Well, they all do different things differently, right? So I generally find for the most part, I end up layering at least two, sometimes three, sometimes even, or four of them, just depending on what sound I'm going for. And then very similar with the brass. I have a full con component of brass here from going from all the French horns separately. I've got four. I've got a discant horn. I've got trumpets, three of them. I've got three trombones. I've got a tuba. And then I've got some um, patches that are specific to a certain library um, combinations of chimbasso, monster low brass, blah, blah, blah. And then moving on, I've got another set of brass which is sample modeling, um, which is really, really good stuff if, and I think only if you have one of these, this is a breath controller, but this is a very fancy breath controller in that when you wear it, basically you blow, you bite, so that's two different controllers, then you can move your head back and forth or left and right. stuff is happening based on what I'm doing. Perhaps not the best performance ever, but it gives you an idea of how expressive the modeling stuff can be and I use it a lot. Um, moving on, I have a full component of woodwinds here. Um, going from piccolo flute to flutes to a flute ensemble patch to alto flute to bass flute, oboes, oboe ensemble, korang lei, which is an English horn, um, a clarinet solo, um, a clarinet ensemble, a bass clarinet, a contrabass, a bassoon, uh, and then a contrabassoon. And again, with woodwinds, that, that by the way is a Spitfire um, library, which is nice, nice enough. Um, but the modeling stuff is where it's at. And again, if I select a clarinet, a 
um, it's uh, it's pretty cool. And then I have a folder of keyboards, which includes pianos, um, a harp, um, harp harmonics, another harp from a different company, um, a celeste, different kind of celeste, um, and then I have all of my unpitched percussion, bass drums, all my timpanies, um, snares, toms, blah, blah, blah. And then I have my pitched percussion, which will be my vibraphones, um, my marimbas, um, xylophones, glockenspiels, all that stuff. Now, that's a lot of stuff. And basically it means you have a full orchestra at your fingertips. Um, what I didn't mention and is ultra important is that each and every one of these tracks that we've just been through um, of all the instruments coming from that dear computer over there um, are pre-bust. I don't have to touch them. All my violins, all my cellos, all that stuff is coming out of the string bus. All the brass coming out of the brass bus. All the woods coming out of the woodwind bus. Um, automatically, don't have to touch it, which is awesome. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet, which is very important, is how is all my reverb working? Um, obviously, when you're working with instrument tracks, you can bring up any reverb you want. So let's say for argument's sake, um, I want to bust this to the keyboard master. That sound is now landing up in the keyboard master, which is eventually going into the stem master. And if I want to add a reverb to that, all I have to do is go to the reverb that is assigned to the keyboard master. As you can see, it's assigned to the same output over on the instrument than it is on the reverb that I'm now assigning to the sound. So you can see the reverb appears there. If I turn it up, I get more reverb. Uh, this is the reverb here itself. And that reverb is going to the same bus that that sound is going to end up on, which is exactly what you want in most cases. Now, all of these sounds that we just went through um, sounds that are coming from the V Pro, all my orchestral template stuff, are already pre-bussed with, with their corresponding reverbs, just like I showed you. So when I play this violin sound over here, you're already hearing that reverb that I already have pre-bussed. And so all of this goes to, to making life easier for me um, and still being able to provide the flexibility that I need. For example, Let's come back to here. Let's say I have this hit and I want to assign that to the hits output, which I've already done, but I'm sending this to a mix where I have an, a feeling the mixer might want to put that sound in the surrounds and, but still have the main sound in the front. He's going to need that separately. So I can do that. If I play the sound, you can see it appearing in the, in the hits. But if I sign it to this reverb here called EOS, it's a lovely long reverb that I've been using for a long time. I love it. Um, and that is pre-assigned to this bus here called the Reverb Master. And that will appear here. So now when I hit this thing and turn the, um, the send up, You hear that long reverb is appearing here and is appearing over here. And that's how you get a reverb separately from the main sound so that if the mixer wants to pop that in the surrounds or do something crazy with it, he or she can do that. And so that's really, in a nutshell, how my template is put together. Um, as I say, every composer will have a, a different way of doing this. And it really doesn't matter. It's about workflow. It's always about workflow. What makes you feel comfortable? What do you like to look at? What makes you feel like writing music? What makes you forget about the processes that are happening under the hood? Um, these are all the important questions. And it takes a long time to build a template like this. This is a new template as of about a year ago. Um, before that, I would used my previous template for um, about 10 years. This one took me a good four months, I think 
of just re refining and refining and refining. It sounds like it shouldn't take that long, but man, it sure does. Uh, but once you've got it down, and and um, it's just a, a pure pleasure to wake up in the morning, get on this thing and write music. So I hope you've enjoyed this. It's a lot to take in. And if you have any questions about this, put them down below. I'll get to them for sure. Um, I'm going to do another episode that shows you how I've built all this stuff from the ground up um, on both um, this computer and on the VE Pro computer. Um, so check that one out if you want a more detailed explanation of all this. So don't ever stop learning. I'll catch you on the next one. Stay safe out there. Um, I just like to do just a word the uh, um... okay, for Christ's sake oh okay no, for fuck's sake But, what? But what? Ah, oh, fuck it. I've had enough. All right, let's stop. <laughs>